Welcome to Daily Bible Study for Super Newbies. Today is January 7th, and today we are talking about Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 17 on pages 19 and 20 of your Life Application Study Bible, NIV. Now, today we are going to talk about, about life. Today we're going to talk about the regeneration of life, about making things new. It's not really quite what this is about, but this is the message that the Holy Spirit is is telling me to share. So we are going to talk about this today. In the scripture, God and, uh, you know, Noah and the ark and his family and all the animals, this is day 57. It's been a long 57 days. They have got to be sick to high heavens of being on the ark. So on day 57, you know, God is like, okay, you guys can come out now. And all right, they're like, okay, cool. There is literally nobody here. Everything is gone except for plants and, you know, the animals that they brought on the ark with them. So they're all going to whatever corner they're supposed to go to. And they're looking around and they're like, wow, how is this gonna work? So God tells them, he said, um, be fruitful and increase in number and fill in the earth. That is Genesis, you know, um, chapter nine, verse one. So he's telling them, listen, you guys got to make some babies. You got to make a whole bunch of babies. So you, uh, Noah's sons and, and their wives, you go get to work. <laughs> go get to work. And I'm, I'm sure the guys were like, okay, I'll do it for you. <laughs> right? I mean, that, that was only part of it, though. Like, it was only part of it. So they probably had to be a little nervous because they had just watched basically the world end. And now he's telling them to go make more people, be fruitful and multiply, increase in number. And they're kind of like, do we really want to bring our children into a world that just ended if you're just going to end it again? Right? Imagine that. In the last days, if you knew that like the world had just ended or was about to end, would you really be trying to conceive children? So I'm guessing, you know, to kind of calm down their nerves or maybe to make them feel a little bit better about the horrible trauma they just experienced. You know, they're like, all right, so you want us to make more kids. And God said in chapter, you know, Genesis chapter nine, verse three, he says, everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you green plants, I now give you everything. Okay, that's great. That is awesome, God, thank you so much. So we are now allowed to eat, you know, the animals and the plants. Okay, cool, I get it, I get it. Thank you very much for that. But are you going to end the world again? Right? So they're still asking this question. I mean, I imagine they would be. It's not written like that in the scripture, but human nature, right? Are you just going to end the world again? You know, I'm just thinking. And he, he goes on to tell them, listen, don't worry about having enough to eat, about having enough, you know, to feed your kids, because I want you to make like a lot of children. You, you guys got to repopulate the earth. You got to do all that. So they're like, you got to have enough food. Don't worry about it. He says, you know, you can eat, yeah, you can eat the animals too, but you must not eat meat that still has lifeblood in it. Now to me, that means don't eat an animal that's still alive. Don't cut pieces of meat of an animal that's still alive, right? That just makes sense. Lifeblood, meaning blood that has life, you know, flowing through it. Because remember when uh, Abel killed, uh, I mean, when Cain killed Abel, and God said to, you know, Cain, your brother's lifeblood speaks to me from the ground because blood represents life. So I'm guessing when they said you must not eat meat that still has light, its lifeblood in it means, you know, don't eat, don't eat the meat of an animal that, you know, is still alive or an animal that you just crucified or something, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little stressed out today. I'm doing my best. I promise you, we are all human. We all grow as we go. I am doing my best today. I had a bit of a rough day yesterday. 
So then he gets to, then, then God says in verse six, whoever sheds human blood, whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. I'm like, how does that fit into you telling them that they're going to have enough food to eat for all the babies you're telling them to make, right? What? I don't, why is that part in there? Well, there is, there is a reason why he was talking to them about, about murder because he, I'm, I'm thinking I'm interpreting this to, to mean that he wanted to explain to them why he, he killed all the people on the earth, why he killed them, why they were no longer worthy to live. I mean, he told them, you know, because there's so much evil in the world, but the one sin that was like super duper duper bad, of course, there was a lot of bad sins happening, but the murder thing was a big deal for him. Murder was a big deal. And he says, why? He says, because we are all created in God's image. And because we're created in God's image, he offers those created in his image eternal life. <sighs> Because God gave us life with his with his very breath, you know, the Holy Spirit. So there are consequences when someone is murdered. This this one was a bit tough for me. I'm trying to put the pieces of this together. So the overall idea I got from reading Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 17, and it's a super short read today, is that he wanted them to, to build anew after something really bad had happened, after they had just watched the world end and they were the only ones who were deemed worthy to repopulate the earth. So they're they're on the land and he's telling them, listen, you can eat animals and the plants now. I give all of it to you, um, but you can't eat something that's still alive. And then he says, because you know, life blood, blood is life. And then he's like, murder is bad. Here's why murder is bad. Because when you kill another human, by another human you shall be killed, which means you're going to be punished to death. <sighs> oh boy, huh? Yeah, pretty tight. Pretty tight. So, <laughs> so this is a, this is basically the scripture that he's telling them. Listen, go make babies. Go make babies. Go make lots and lots and lots of babies. And. We also learned today why murder is bad. Murder is is evil. Well, we kind of already knew murder was bad. Maybe you didn't know why the Bible says murder is bad. The Bible says murder is bad because we humans are created in God's image. He loves each and every one of us, no matter how horrifically awful you might feel a person is. God gives life, God takes it away. So my interpretation of this, and I could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong. Please comment below what your interpretation of this is. My interpretation is that God gives life, only God takes it away. So for a person to take another human life in murder, um, and self-defense is different, I believe, than murder, um, but murder is a huge sin, huge sin because only God decides that it's time for someone's life to end. Hmm. Only God decides when it's time for someone's life to end. Hmm. Okay. You know, we all know what I'm talking about, but, but it doesn't need to be said because y'all probably understand what I'm talking about. Okay then, maybe with a few visual aids. But that's it for today, brothers and sisters. I am definitely fine. I'm okay. I am seeing my doctor tomorrow. I'm an ox. I'm an ox. <laughs> so with that, uh, I'm going to end a little short today so I can get some more rest because my husband was more than a little unhappy with me that I decided I was going to come do these videos when I should be laying down. So that's it. I love you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loves you. Have a wonderful day, all. I will see you tomorrow.